Hello, my young friends, or old friends. I actually have no idea how old you are. Welcome. So this past weekend, I got to go to London. It was quite exhilarating, and I haven't returned with my normal accent since. Actually, I learned um, that there are lots of different accents in London. But I was pretty impressed that when I showed my accent to native speakers, they said it was pretty good. Although they said it was quite posh, which I guess is okay. Anyway, I was in London because I got invited by the Royal Society to give a presentation on the replication crisis and on pre-registration. And I thought, hey, I already prepared a talk. Maybe I should give it to y'all. And I thought you might be interested in hearing what it was about. So without further ado, let me share with you the words that I said to the Royal Society. Exploration versus confirmation, mature versus immature sciences, and tests versus models. A lot of these uh, remarks are based on a paper that I wrote with uh, Joe Rogers. And I will say this was really, really hard to get published. And the first journal that we submitted to, uh, they had all statisticians read the article. And those statisticians said, this is blatantly obvious to everyone. Everybody knows this. Rejected. And my co-author and I were like, no, this might be obvious to you, but it's not obvious to everyone else. And that's kind of the story of my publishing career is a lot of what I write is obvious to statisticians and not so obvious to non-statisticians, which is kind of annoying. So then we decided to submit it to American Psychologist and we told them, hey, just so you know, we want some reviewers who are not statisticians. And they obliged. And not surprising to me at all, everybody who read this said, wow, I had no idea. This is groundbreaking. This is worthy of publication. So because this, in a lot of ways, is a summary of that paper, what I'm about to say may be completely obvious to you. Or it may be groundbreaking. It really depends on your statistical training. But I can assure you that outside of a stats-trained community, this is not obvious. They do not know this. Like I said, the conference was on pre-registration, and from a statistical perspective, here are my thoughts on pre-registration. And if you're not familiar with the idea of pre-registration, let me just tell you real quick. And I'll speak for my own field, psychology, um, but similar things have happened in like medicine and exercise science and that sort of thing. So back in like 2015, um, there was a growing awareness among psychologists that a lot of what was happening wasn't replicable. And I'll go ahead and link in the videos my discussions on the replication crisis. And the basic idea was that researchers would have a hypothesis, test their hypothesis, and it wouldn't work out so well. And so they'd say, well, my first model didn't work. Let me try a different model. And so maybe they'd try a different dependent variable, or maybe they'd drop a treatment condition, or maybe they'd play with the outliers and do all sorts of different things, which we might call researchers' degrees of freedom, or p-hacking, to eventually find a statistical model that produced statistical significance. And so as a way to combat that uh, p-hacking, it was proposed that what we ought to do is do something called pre-registration, where before you even perform your study, before you even collect data, you pre-register or you basically tell um, or write a document that says, here's what I plan to test, here's exactly how I plan to test it, and here's what I expect to happen. Speaking as a statistician, to me, the role of pre-registration is to prevent probability gaming. And what do I mean by probability gaming? So let's say I were to tell you I can predict the future. And to prove it, I take a pair of dice in my hands, put it up to my head and say, by the power of my mind, I am going to predict the outcome of this dice roll. And before I toss the dice, I say, this is gonna be two sixes. Boom! And guess what? It's two sixes. Would you be impressed? Now, when I asked this, it was to a bunch of scientists, and most of them were like, no, because of course scientists are skeptical. Although some of them were like, yeah, that'd be kind of impressive. So I ask you, would you be impressed? Probably. You might be skeptical, but it'd still be pretty impressive. Now, let's say instead of that happening, I took it in my head and I say, I call two sixes. And then I roll the dice and I get a three and a two. And I say, oh, just a minute. Pick it up again, roll it again, get a four and a six. Pick it up, roll it again, get a one and a three. And then do that 37 times until finally I get double sixes. And then I say, ah ha ha, look, I have predicted the dice roll. Would you be impressed then? I don't think so. Why? Because even though the probability of getting two sixes is a rare event, the fact that I gave myself multiple opportunities to do it makes anything that is rare become likely. Pre-registration makes that less likely. So in this example, being able to call what the future outcome is and giving yourself one opportunity makes it impressive and makes it believable. So pre-registration is designed to do that, to demonstrate that if you're looking for a rare event, which is what we do in statistics, and you called that rare event in advance, it's a lot more impressive than if you give yourself multiple opportunities to do it.
And for that p-value to mean anything, you have to specify your analysis in advance, but you also have to specify the sample size in advance. You have to meet the assumptions of the statistical model, and you cannot do any deviations whatsoever from that statistical model. And the way that I describe it to my students is it's like you have an R script, and all you do is once you finish collecting the data is you hit run, and you make no modifications whatsoever. Now, that's the sort of preparation that is rare. It's very hard to get to a point where you are ready to push play on your analysis without any sort of modifications whatsoever. And I would emphatically argue that at least within my discipline, I would say most disciplines, we are not ready for that. We do not have sufficient preparation to be able to just run our analysis. But again, how many people actually know that? And there's a second problem that is kind of related. Let's say we're running a regression model. With regression models, what they are designed to do is they're designed to find the linear combination that maximizes the correlation between those predictors and the outcome. Or to put it differently, it is designed to find the best possible way to predict the outcome. Now, if you run your statistical model on, let's say, 30 predictors, and it finds the best possible way to combine those predictors to predict the outcome, that's kind of a problem because you don't know whether what you found you found it because you have an algorithm that is good at finding things, or if you found something that is actually real, that is actually causal, or that is actually valid, that has some scientific value. So once again, the fact that you have an algorithm that is designed to find things makes it hard to understand whether you found that thing because the algorithm is good at finding things or because there is something there. Or to relate this to the dice analogy, it would be like rolling the dice, seeing that it lands on a three and a four, saying, I predict three and a four, and then claiming to have won the dice roll. But again, how many people know that? Not many. And so at this point, let me just say emphatically that there is nothing wrong with exploration. In the words of Jack McArdle, he said, it can be said that exploratory analyses predominate our actual research activities. To be more extreme, we can assert that there's actually no such thing as a true confirmatory analysis of data, nor should there be. That's kind of an extreme stance. I don't know that I agree with him completely, but I would say that at least with my students and the research that I encounter, the vast majority of it is exploratory. Why is it exploratory? Because we are not ready for confirmation. And for that reason, the type of statistics that I teach, 90% of it is exploratory. Only like 10% of it is confirmatory because again, that's where my students are at and that's where the majority of science is at, I think. So going back to the role of pre-registration, if pre-registration is designed to reduce probabilistic gaming, and if most of our research is intentionally exploratory, or another way of putting that is if most of our research is gaming and we know that it's gaming probabilities, then maybe pre-registration serves no purpose whatsoever. And instead what people do is they pre-register their exploratory hypotheses and then when they report their results, they say this study was pre-registered, which makes reviewers think that it was confirmatory, when in actuality, they just pre-registered a exploratory research paper. And it gives them extra credit or give themselves a pat on the back when it really isn't merited. And so once again, this is kind of a controversial stance to take at this particular conference. For the majority of research that I see, most of it is exploratory. And so because it's exploratory and we know we're gaming the probabilities, pre-registration serves no purpose. But! But it will serve a purpose as we mature in our science. Speaking of which, how does science progress? This is just my observation. I don't have like a reference for this or anything, but to me, it seems that we observe phenomena, we measure phenomena, we develop simple theories and competing theories of the same phenomena, and then we create simple models to explain these phenomena and competing models, and then we test the models. And then based on the results of those tests, we then refine our models. But if you look at these activities, the majority of those activities are exploratory. And very few of them we would classify as confirmatory. The way that I see it when you're developing theories, it follows this specific sort of evolution that initially your research is very exploratory. You're building models. And then eventually it becomes more confirmatory where you're testing the models. And along the way, you are gathering evidence in favor of your theory. And you recognize that along the way, every study you do is really just a drop in the evidential bucket. And it's going to require a lot of drops before we are ready for more confirmatory work. And this is a point that I made that I didn't have time to go much into, but I'll make it quickly here again that the purpose of tests like an ANOVA and a t-test and those sorts of things, they are there to serve these statistical models. But the way that they're currently used is they're used very a-theoretically, or I might say 
they are used a model Lee, if I can make up a word. But again, how many people actually know this? Not many. So when we consider theory development, I think some theories are more on the mature side and some are on the immature side. So I would say with mature theories, the goal is to evaluate and modify existing models and to explore their implications. So mature theories tend to have very well-developed models. They, te they tend to be complex in breadth, but very parsimonious in specification. There is a large, large body of accumulated evidence and most of the research is confirmatory. And I would argue, pre-registration is most beneficial here. And by the way, that ended up being a controversial take, um, and maybe I'll talk about that some other time. But again, for mature theories, pre-registration is most beneficial. Why is it most beneficial? Well, think about it this way. When you pre-register your hypothesis, you are doing what we call a risky test, meaning the probability of your test being falsified is really high because you're trying to predict it in advance. And if we have very mature theories, we can afford to put them at risk because they've withstood many, many tests already. So pre-registration is very beneficial because it increases the riskiness of the model failing. Now, if you compare that to immature theories, their goal is to develop models, not to test models. And so typically we have very simple or even non-existent models. And most of their work is predominantly exploratory. There's very little accumulated evidence, but there is a trajectory of accumulated growth. And once again, their theories are so immature, it doesn't make sense to do risky tests or to pre-register them because you're not ready for it and they're probably just gonna fail. We haven't accumulated enough evidence to be able to put them at that sort of risk. And so if we have mature sciences and immature sciences, we also have imposter sciences. And what imposter sciences do is they over rely on tests particularly in the absence of statistical models. So they might run a t-test or an ANOVA without really considering the statistical model underlying that. And so what they end up doing is they test for the sake of testing, but not for developing theories. And their models do not progress in complexity, nor do they progress in breadth. And they tend to use confirmatory methods like t-tests and ANOVA and any sort of significance test when they have exploratory intentions. But again, how many actually knew that? So do you see the problem? We have this tool called pre-registration, which is designed to really enhance the riskiness of our models, but people don't know how to use the tool correctly. But then they do use the tool and then pat themselves on the back that they're using the tool and give their study much more credit than it actually deserves. So the majority of what I've described today are basic rules that most people just don't know. So if you put a tool in the hands of somebody who doesn't know how to use it, it's not gonna make much of a difference. In fact, it might do more harm than good. So how do we move forward? That is a good question. I would say we need to move away from significance tests and move toward model building. And I've been saying that for years. That's not a surprise. We also need to move away from confirmatory research, or immature sciences at least, and move much more toward exploratory research. And move away from pushing this idea of pre-registration and move toward the idea of promoting education. Because again, if people don't know how to use the tool, they're gonna misuse it. And actually at this conference, it was really interesting that there were lots of people who gave reports on how the tool doesn't seem to be working as well as we hoped it would. And a lot of people are really abusing the tool. Well, yeah, not surprising. If they don't know how to use it, they're gonna abuse it. So I guess to summarize my thoughts, and I think it's important for me to summarize these thoughts now because uh, when I gave the presentation, a lot of the questions um, were not about the premise of what I was trying to say. Interestingly, a lot of the discussion centered around on how I defined a mature science. And um, there was a point that I made that I thought was relatively unimportant. And that thought being that um, pre-registration makes much more sense for mature sciences. Uh, a lot of people disagreed with that. <laughs> but that was really not central to the point that I was trying to make. The big point I was trying to make is that for pre-registration to be effective, we need to educate people on how to use it. People need to know why pre-registration is important. And again, it's important because we're increasing the riskiness of the test in advance. And people need to know that if they're in exploratory mode, which most people are, that pre-registration doesn't make sense. And people need to know that the process of building strong theories begins with exploration. And that exploration is followed up by refinement. But unfortunately, the way science works is that somebody tests one theory and then they test another theory and they test another theory and there's no accumulation of evidence, there's no building of theories. So really, that's my big take home message. So now I leave it up to you. Do you have any thoughts or comments on this? What do you think? Does pre-registration do any good when you're doing exploratory research? Let me know. And also, I remind you to visit simplistics.net 
And there you can take a course with me. You can do a self-guided Canvas course that walks you through the videos to watch and the chapters to read and gives you quizzes and you're allowed to post discussion questions and that sort of thing. Or you can take a live class with me and have interaction with me through Zoom and I can answer your questions personally. If you're interested, see the link in the description. Until next time, peace out.